Mayotte Hotel. This outside rocks are tap around my eye. So with all the tragic stuff that goes on around the world, it's really good that um, I could muster up some energy to go out here and put some of this stuff together so you can see the things that I see inside of my mind. Like I've been explaining to everyone, I've been sent here to translate the activities of these light ships around the planet and to let you know exactly what's going on. Because of that, I'm ostracized by people. Had to get into a fight with some little dumbass the other day. 26. Like I've always told him, you need to stop drinking, stop eating that damn meat, stop smoking those cigarettes. All that stuff dulls your consciousness and make you stupid as hell. Now this little idiot is in jail, going to have a felony. Felony uh, trial that he's got to fight. And he's going to lose because he's going to have to fight me. And I'm going to make sure that he loses. And that's just the dynamics of it. Because you see, when I come out here and tell you I do a job for the sun, and then you get bad, you get jealous, you get envious, you don't like the energy coming from me, and then you team up with other people. And then, if you guys been paying attention out there about what I've been saying, I've been talking about bringing equality to the world for everyone, especially us melanated people. In case you guys don't know, that Zimmerman faggot who killed that little Trevon, he got away. Nothing got done to him. So don't worry about it, see, because I got the green light for his ass. So America, you ain't got a trip. You know, if you all want to get together and have some unity with each other and everything, get together and have some unity and discuss what you're going to do for your community yourselves and stop letting your communities be controlled by these bigoted ass policemen. It's just real simple. The other night when I did get into a fight with this little idiot, the policeman that came over here was real respectable. You know, people is paying attention. Everybody is starting to see for themselves that there's something wrong going on with everything about our true dynamics of existing on this planet. Why would you hate me for coming to bring it up? Why would you hate me for being blessed by the sun to be the person to come and talk about this stuff? Why do you have to sit around and instigate the continuation of the ostracizing of the person that's here to analyze you all and decide whether all you get burnt up. That's the true dynamics of it. I've been telling you guys about these fires coming. There's a man burnt up here in Troutdale. Last night, here in Troutdale, Oregon, we got fires here. Fires all over. I told y'all that the sun is going to burn y'all wicked asses up. Some of you going to get in prison while the damn fires go on. Some of you ain't going to be able to walk real fast to get away from the fire. This is a really sad circumstance, but it's due. Now, all you young black men out there who get mad at me because I say you shouldn't be sagging and that you look tacky walking around with your ass hanging out and all that, don't you believe that now that the earth is on fire and going to burn every damn thing up, is that a good enough reason to cover your ass up? I mean, just think about it. So the fire won't burn your ass up. If you can't find any other reason than that, and you still want to walk around sagging and looking like an idiot, please don't get mad at me when I mention how stupid that be, because maybe one person out there could understand my serious, serious concern about the well-being of this planet and the people on it. And if that one person could find a belt and put it on, can you just put up with my shit just for that one person could benefit from listening to me? And for all you old black men out there, you 40, you 50 years old, and you sitting around here and you see the green light, and you see all this stuff, but you're so stuck in that world where you want to have the privileges that comes along with not being under a divine abidance, a calibration that's given to you by a universal, truly ordained, supreme being. The fact that you try to overlook that make you try to hate that and hurt that like you motherfuckers did, Yahshua. But here's the difference. I don't go down like that. I don't go down like that guy is going to really pay a lot for being stupid as hell up in his house. And all of it was about him coming in here trying to take over every damn thing anyway, but it didn't work. And now he got a felony added to his shit. And all you people who instigated it and coerced him into being an idiot that you helped him become, know this. I'm sending the green light to get your ass too. Because this is not a joke, see. I was sent here to repair this earth. And those of you in my immediate center who shows me that you have no respect for my honesty and you have no ideal about what you're doing and dealing with shows me your ignorance. And my number one freaking objective is to eradicate ignorance off this planet. 
So you know what? All you immediate people who's done your little nasty, stupid shit, when I came around you and offered you nothing but straight up divine energy, and I see who you are, and I know what happened to us as a people, because you are the remnants of the people who created this deadness on our earth, and that's the reason you can't change, because you like it. It was made for you. And so this is the shit that you got coming to you. Sure, and it was all black behind the house. And uh, then the wind started blowing and swirling. And then uh, ash started falling out of the air. And I realized that it was now we had to leave. We had no more time. <laughs> I went uh, towards the house and turned off. I had a water fog faucet running in the back of the house because I had planted a tree and I turned the water off and I could hear crackling of the flames. Uh, I hollered to my wife, we need to leave now. Uh, we had uh, a little warning earlier to load up things that we wanted from the house. We gathered pictures and things that we wanted. Both of the cars were loaded up. We got in the cars and the smoke was starting to filter down around through. Uh, I had a clear zone around my house. The winds were swirling and kicking up the like little dust devils. And uh, my wife and I didn't waste any time leaving there. It was strange to see a traffic jam in Yarnell, a small community. Uh, everyone was leaving. And uh, actually, you have us on film leaving at, uh, and she was in a black uh, Sonata, and I had a, a gold silver uh, Crossfire. Uh, but I hadn't realized that the flames were that big behind us because there was so much smoke. And viewing your video, I realized we got out just in time because it moved extremely fast. It must be, Tom, a little bit surreal for you tonight, talking to us, knowing what's happened, and at the same time knowing how close you and your wife were. When it happened, it happened very quick. Um, I thought we had, they had told us we had three hours. Uh, when it started, the, the wind started coming, we didn't have much time at all. Like I said, we got in the cars, and luckily we had everything that we wanted out of the house that we could fit into two vehicles and then we left and like I said the winds were blowing crazy there was black smoke everywhere and uh, ash was falling out of the, the stop of this uh, sky and uh, it was very crazy it sounds so eerie. Tom, uh, this is Lynn Sukuni. You, you were describing earlier that um, you didn't really know what you were up against or what this fire was like when you and your wife were fleeing. Now that you've had time to think about it and you were so emotional when you first got on the phone with us, it, it's got to be hitting you. Well, I lost a house. I didn't lose a loved one. <laughs> it's uh, that morning we had gotten up and uh, looked off our back deck and we had seen where the fire had laid down and there was a small two or three spot places where the, the flame was uh, very small and then a little bit of smoke. So we thought, well, most of this is over. They'll clean it up uh, today, Sunday morning. So we drove into Prescott and we had uh, breakfast, went to church, and uh, coming back, we noticed that the smoke over towards Yarnell was very large. And I said, well, that's strange. It wasn't that way when we left in the morning. So then by the time we got back around, I want to say two, uh, we had driven through uh, Prescott Valley and saw the flames that had spread over there, which is about four miles from uh, our house. We're in Glen Isla in Yarnell. And so when we got back to our house, uh, the f People's Valley, I could see the smoke off in the distance, but then uh, we got a phone call from a friend saying that we had a uh, evacuation and we had three to four hours. Well, we loaded up as much as we could into two vehicles. We didn't have that much time because like I said, when the, 
I heard the thunder and the wind started blowing crazy and things changed very rapidly within minutes and like I said when I watched the video of us leaving our now and the flames behind us that was a really close call. Tom, I, I hate to ask you this, but um, do you have any idea if your house survived? <laughs> when I went to turn the water off, I could hear the flames. My wife was on the upper deck. She said she could feel the heat. I don't think our house is there anymore. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, and, and obviously, you know, I, and I know you feel this too, uh, that, you know, there, there are more important things tonight than, than structures. Uh, although you feel for your home, but it's those, it's the families of those 19 firefighters who have perished tonight in Yornell. We're talking with Tom Columbus, an evacuee, and uh, we're awaiting a, a press conference from the Prescott mayor and the fire chief there, which we'll go to as soon as it happens here on 12 News, continuing coverage of this horrible, tragic fire, which has claimed 19 lives tonight. Uh, Tom Columbus, uh, where are you tonight, Tom? I'm uh, back to, actually down in the valley at my son's house in uh, Litchfield Park, and uh, we're safe. Um, like I said early in the beginning, uh, my heart and prayers go out for those who lost loved ones. Tom, uh, listen, I, I can tell you from all of us here, our hearts go out to you and all the folks uh, in Yarnell. And, and again, thank you for sharing a couple of minutes with us here tonight. Thank you, Mark. Tom, yeah. so sorry. Just it, something like this is so tragic. And when when we're in the midst of this kind of wildfire season, it's our own Jim Paxson that we go to to rely on for explanations of how quick and how brutal Mother Nature can turn on people. Jim, this is just, just a tragedy all the way around. Yeah, it really is. It's, uh, it's beyond understanding, and, uh, and especially with a... Uh, with an elite crew that's from Prescott that knows that country that has fought so many fires in in those conditions, they just uh, they just got caught by surprise with this. They got caught by a bad step. With the outflow of winds or whatever happened, and you know we have been so dry for so many years. And it's gonna stay dry my, because I told you way, the whole I five system. Uh, from Canada last year to freaking Mexico. That's what you're looking at beginning right now. Better get your green light. Real simple. We have been in a drought ever since. And things have only gotten worse. And and we, we've got to take these folks that live in these fire-prone areas, understand that they live in fire-prone areas. And, and we need to do everything we can to help the firefighters, which means cleaning that 30 feet out from that. See, here's the deal. If you can see the fire, it looks the same color as the guy the segment does. All right? Synonymous. There it goes. It's letting you know it. The green fire that I've been telling you guys is going to burn your asses up. It's getting into effect. It's getting started. Okay? It killed 19 firemen. All right? Now, I'm, I really do empathize, feel sympathy and everything. I do. But I have a job to do, so I'm going to do it. I don't have a problem with firefighters. You all know that. I don't have no problem with anyone. What I got is a problem with not doing my job. I don't care how many stupid ass young haters think they're going to be trying to intimidate me. How many sorry ass faggot 50 year old don't want to do nothing but waste their life. Haters is going to be out there and confronting to me. I don't care. I'm still going to do my job. My job right now is to let you know this is just not mother nature doing stuff. This is mother nature doing exactly what I told you was going to happen. She's going to burn y'all asses off this planet because you guys have proven to her that you're selfish and greedy and that you will kill all us black people off the earth. Proof in the concentration camps. And now that I've came here and showed you my authenticity, you're still not buying the green light. It's like